welcome to Full from Iron. Please don't forget to like, comment on, and share the stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. As and when it's out of the channel, as always, we thank you very much indeed for your support, which is a nice little segue into asking you to support the Iron Supporting Food Bank charity. You can see the Just Giving link there. I will try to copy and paste this momentarily. This is a charity that, <clears throat> excuse me, operates in the Newham Borough area to put food on the plates of families that are going through a tough time in this cost of living crisis. So I would ask you, please, if you can, give generously. No donation is too small. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. Joining us this evening to discuss the matters at London Stadium yesterday, one all draw against the Spuds. Duke, my usual partner, and Mr. Steve 50 is joining us as well. Um, Duke, if I turn to you first of all, um, please with that point. Did we say something? Did we place him off? Did he, did... I think was he, was I he think, not no, happy no, no, he's no, he's put something in the live chat. In the live chat? No, yeah. He yes. couldn't he couldn't hear me. So he's come out, oh, he's right. gonna come out and go back in. Oh private chat. I can't see the private chat. It's over on that corner on the screen. Uh first things first, I just want to say uh wanna um commend you um for clicking the right uh, intro um, <laughs> video there. Oh, just, uh, no. well, really well done. I cringed. Yeah, I got right. you now, guys. Yeah. Good, I'm glad. Um, no, just um, Shocking. the reason I said that, guys, those of you that are watching, we had the interview with uh, Mr. Tony Carr on Tuesday evening, and it was a fantastic interview. Really great guy. I really enjoyed being able to sit back and, and listen. Um, and but Gacy pressed the wrong, wrong credits, didn't you, Rob? He pressed the outro <laughs> credit. Did. On the intro, <laughs> I, I then would have put the intro credits on the outro to be honest with you, but you didn't. Um, no, but it, it made wrong to be honest with you, mate. Right. But it didn't make no difference to the interview. The interview was fantastic, it was a really, really well done piece. Um, I want to say well done to you, um, congratulations, and well done for getting him on. Um, that mm. was all you, so no, <laughs> um, okay, I can be very persuasive, dude, because you know. As I know, um, vis a vis last night, fan bloody tastic, Rob. Where did that come from? That performance was, um, was grit, was determination, was, um, passion, was togetherness. Um, there's been a lot said in the press and, and on. On other channels and stuff that we're we're not a team together, that there seems like there could be a little bit of infighting that Moyes might have lost the dressing room, etc. etc. Didn't see any of that. Didn't see any of that. I'm currently sitting here looking at a picture on the on, on one of the other screens of um of Suchik having a bit of a celebration and uh Rice, Ben Rama, Kara, Bowen, I think that is, Sufal, Antonio and I don't know who the other one is in front of Kara. All jumping, celebrating, smiling, laughing. You know, that, that absolute, it, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't know about you boys, but I, 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 I feel that that's our best performance in probably about 10 or 12 games. Yeah. Steve and I actually met at half time, didn't we, Steve? Because obviously oh. Steve sits just a little way down yeah, from where yeah. I sit. And it was quite interesting because I'll be honest, I'm, I'm going to get this out of the way. I was actually quite disappointed with our performance in the first half. I actually thought that, but for a 10, and, and the weird thing was, and I actually said this on a, a little piece that I did for Jake Cox's West Ham unofficial. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you go and subscribe to him and spread the love. But I, other than a 10 minute phase in the first half, I felt that, we were a little bit lacking in our intensity with sort of trying to win the ball back as far up the pitch as possible. I think we allowed them too much, too much sort of territory, if I'm being honest. I think we allowed them to sort of advance too much into our zone, if you will. 
without actually trying to win the ball back off of them as early as possible. I think, as I say, there was a 10 minute phase where I thought we played really well. And there was a cut. I think despite the fact that I think we lacked a little bit of intensity, interestingly enough, we actually had the better chances, in, yeah. which is quite strange. But Steve and I sort of had a chat at half time, and I sort of said we needed to find another gear because obviously at one nil down, I was sitting there thinking this this could be this this could go horribly wrong. But they did find that other gear in the second half. They they really did step it up. Yeah, I actually think. Sorry, Steve, just quickly. I actually think you're wrong there, Rob. I think what we actually did when I've watched the game back again this morning, my uh, extended highlights. And what they actually, what we actually did was we targeted Sanchez on the press. Yep. Um, yep. And that wasn't just in the first half, that was second half as well, but we actually targeted Sanchez on the press. So we kind of let them have the ball. And, and I understand what you're saying when you say the intensity didn't seem to be there with, with the press itself. What it actually was, was we were waiting and and if you will go back and watch the highlights again, when when Sanchez receives the ball from either Lloris or or Dyer, or even from um, Hoiberg or Royale, you know the guys on his side of the pitch. What actually happened was Antonio was off like a rocket every time Sanchez received the ball. But not only that, the second Sanchez got the ball. You saw Bowen pushing in on Davies. You saw Fornells pushing in on Dyer. And then you saw, I think it was Ben Rama, would then drop a little bit wider to take out Emerson there. A Rice or Suchek are pushing on Basuma. And all of a sudden, Spurs had no real outlet, like comfortable outlet. You know, Sanchez was panicking. He'd, he'd get the ball back to to Larice and then Larice only had one option to either give it back to Sanchez and then you had um you had Bowen or you had Antonio or you had one of the others sniffing around him like a, a dog in a park. Hmm. And they they the only other thing that they could do was go long. And then my one of my three uh man of the matches that I'm I'm really having trouble splitting. Hmm. Dealt with it nine times out of ten. Yeah. Um. I mean, the goal comes from us trying to break forward, and Steve, uh, you guys were there. Hmm. If you take a look at the replay of it, there's two people. Yep. Another night not, in Lewisham. Please. And can I just interject, just to say, Sharky, you're very kind. Wow. Thanks very much, sir. Much sure appreciated. Sharky, my man. Thank you, buddy. Um, I think people people were laying the blame at Declan Rice for a loose pass. Other people are laying the blame at the feet of Aaron Cresswell for being caught out of position. I'm actually going to blame them both for not having better football awareness at that moment in time. I don't know how you guys saw it from where you were, because obviously you're on, if my memory serves me, you, you, you guys are opposite side of the pitch to where they actually broke down that side. Um, yeah. What was your opinion on the goal, Steve? Like with regards to obviously oh, Cresswell I, being caught out of play and the bad pass in the end. Well, look, I mean, first of all, going back to the first half, I think, what West Ham did was make sure they couldn't get us on the break because those front three of Spurs are frightening. You know, they are tremendous strikers. As much as it pains me uh -huh. to say this, they are they are a world-class front line, I would argue. So mm. I thought the first half, we managed them very, very well and we snuffed out their option because I think Conte is trying to play counter-attacking football. On the goal... Rice and Creswell, okay, but I actually thought when the ball comes down, Zuma should have pushed him wide and Zuma gave him too much space to run at him. If Zuma had pushed him wide and just sort of channeled him out to the touchline or stuff, it would have A, taken time 
away from their attack, and B, I don't think they could have done the interchange, the passing interchange, so quickly. So, for me, okay, things go wrong in the game. Rice is passed, Crazy out of position. But when it falls to one on one, you know, and you are the last line of defence, as it were, I think Zuma's decision making was wrong there. I think Zuma had a terrific game, but not at that point. I mean, James and I both both were sitting there screaming at him to usher him out. And if you know Zuma backs off and lets the guy in the penalty area, and that's where I think the real problem with the goal comes from, because your defence from time to time, is going to have to cope with the muck-ups your front lines make. So it was Kulisevsky, was wasn't it, that was breaking at him? Yeah. It was Kulisevsky, wasn't it? And then it was the ball down the... Down... Yeah, it was the ball down the line. But if he'd pushed him out towards the touchline, he wouldn't have been able to play that ball so easily and would have had more time to regroup. That's how I saw it. But, I mean, again, when you see it live, it's it's quite interesting because on TV, you get your, your replays and stuff. You've got one mm. look at it. And I haven't watched the game back yet. Yeah. From where I was, the one look I had at it, I, I thought Zuma should have done better. But having said that, that's just my opinion on what I saw in a fraction of a second. Maybe I might, when I watch it back, I might see it very differently. I might be wrong, but I think, yeah, he's gone. Uh, I thought he'd frozen. Hang on, hang on. He's just he's just come back. Here he is. Ah. Sorry, I don't know what happened. The internet decided to go Yeah, you, it just froze. All of a sudden, you was in mid-sort of flow, and then all of a sudden, yes. it just went... I ended up with a with a with a red circle uh, the circle of doom. Um, no, as I was saying, I was I was screaming at, at Kara to be more aware over his over his right shoulder. Hammerhead. You had Son bearing down behind him, and I was like, I, I literally we, because what we'd done in the pub last night was split it into two zones. We had. West Ham versus Spurs in the pool table area. We had Liverpool versus Newcastle in the um, in the main bar. So we had all Spurs and West Ham all mixed in together, all watching the game together. It was actually quite enjoyable. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I was screaming at Kara to be more aware over his shoulder because, again, although um, uh, uh, Rice and Cressy were out of position, Soufal was nowhere to be seen. And the problem was... They were breaking, and Soufal wasn't there either, you know. So, if, if Soufal had been there, Kara would have been able to take his eye off of um, off of Son and gone more middling or moved over to help the other two boys. But as it was, I mean, listen, it was a good breakaway goal by Spurs. Let's take nothing away from them there. Um, but... Obviously, we've we kind of jumped ahead a little bit because obviously before that, Rob, they had the penalty, didn't they? Or I was the, I was about to decision. mention the small <laughs> matter of the VAR stoppage for what seemed like an eternity. Oh, for, didn't it? The, just. For the penalty. <laughs> oh, it, it seemed like, I don't know how long it was, but I think it was a good three or four minutes, it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, yeah. Um, and the stadium was getting more and more restless, thinking, come on, make the damn decision. Because we want to know where we stand on this. But, I don't know. I, it, How did you boys feel in the ground the moment it happened? Not necessarily the VAR, but the header, the arm up from from Cressy in, in a live moment. Without seeing, the, without seeing the VAR replay on the screen and anything else. What did you guys think the moment I, it happened? It, it happened so quick, and you know the yeah. distance that I am from the pitch. I couldn't have swore one way or the other that it was or wasn't a penalty. I had no idea. Happened so quick, and referee blew penalty. And I'm like, oh. But when when the VAR check was going on, I, I don't know, maybe it's me, but the longer it went on, the more I'm thinking, well... There's got to be an ele a big element yeah. of doubt here because it was just going on and on and on. And the moment the referee turned on his heels and trotted over to the VAR, 
you you kind of know what's coming next because I, I don't think I've ever seen it where an on-field referee has gone across to the VAR, watched it, turned around and upheld his original decision. He's always Seven pretty one. much overturned it. I think, yeah, it's but I I didn't ever I've never seen it myself. I, I'm led to believe it's only happened once. I I've not seen that, but I I remember sort of like watching the, the ref at the monitor watching it and I don't know who it was one of the Spurs players was directly behind him and he's he's sort of like he's he's on the sort of like the touchline he's looking over his shoulder and he's looking at the VAR that's where I think it's a little bit wrong I think that they should that the their sh- that monitor should be in I don't know essentially the a other way around shed. Or whatever. Well, it should be so, the other way around. It shouldn't be well, facing the yeah, pitch. Yeah, but then, the, but then the, the sort of like the crowd can see it. So it should be where the, none of the crowd can see it, none of the players can see it. The referee and the referee only is the only one that can see the footage. Because I could see the geezer, whoever it was. I don't know if it was. Um, I, I don't know who was who was on that side. It was Perisic, wasn't it? So I don't know if it was Perisic or whatever that was over his shoulder. But whoever it was, there was a Spurs player that was on the touchline looking over his shoulder at the referee, looking at the footage. And the moment he turned his, his, you know, turned around to the back to the pitch, sort of like shaked his head, no, not a penalty. He was going absolutely mental at the referee. I mean, listen, Ken, 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 Ken's got it right. It was, it hit his head. It's hmm. not a penalty. Like, hmm. I, I'll be honest, my, my arsehole fell out. I was like, oh, the moment it happened, before he gives the penalty, in that literally split second, I was like, oh, shit. Hand to face. And people around me going, what? I went, it's a fucking pen. It's clearly a pen. The female Spurs fan, she was like, yeah, I think you might be right. And then when we're watching and, and VAR and all the rest of it, the, there was a lad sitting on the benches opposite the pool table. He's going, oh, it's hit his head. It's hit his head. Watch. And then there's, they showed like three angles on the telly. Hmm. And the first one wasn't overly conclusive. Yeah. The second one was was better in our favour. Yeah. Third one weren't even worth a toss. And I and I sat there and I was like, of all the cameras at a fucking TV, right, and can pinpoint a mark on my head for CCTV footage to make sure that I don't go back in the ground. They've got the best CC. That you're telling me that we can't get three better camera angles than the three we had for the VAR decision last night. Very, very poor on 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 Cut FA back. and Sky's. Uh, very poor on on FA and Sky's um, like Premier League and Sky's uh, doing that. But Ken was right. It's his head. Fair play to the referee. Fair play to VAR to go. Hey, listen, we think you've missed something. Here. Yeah. Because, I mean, we that, that that could have really screwed us over. Don't get me wrong; it was only a few minutes later, wasn't it, that they they find themselves one new up. I think it was was it what was the what was the minute of the goal, Rob? Was it twenty something? Uh, it was the thirty fourth minute that Thilo Kerr. Oh, was it thirty fourth? Yeah. So it was thirty fourth. I I actually said if we could keep them out until half half, half hour in. I think we can go on and get something out of the game, which, lo and behold, you know, we, we did. did. Uh, which I've got to say, you know, they came out at half time. I thought we were in it. I then thought we really started to play as we know we can play. Again, the pressing from high, targeting Sanchez. If you have a look, there was a couple of, a couple of times when when we were pressing after, after obviously, we, we got our goal. But the pressing really caused some consternation, some problems in the, in their defensive line, and I really enjoyed seeing the arguments from Lloris in the back three, where it just wasn't going their way. Yeah. What was, what was your thought with the penalty incident, Steve? Did you was you? I mean, because as I say, you're you're a little bit closer to it than me, but not by a great not distance. Yeah, not by about eight seats. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's not a great deal. But did you did you initially think pen or no pen? I thought, what's that a pen for? Both James and I looked at each other and went, "What? We just could, we just didn't see it. Yeah. As we didn't see his hand hit the ball at all. So from yeah. our point of view, it was, you know, what the hell have they awarded that for? But again, as you rightly say, 
it is a very brief moment in time. And there will be loads of people who didn't see it hit their, his hand and loads of people who did. And so everybody's reaction is going to be slightly different, isn't it? But for us, it was mm. no, no pen for us. So when I, I think when he went over to VAR, I mean, the directive is if they go over to, ca to the camera, so I understand it's to just confirm they need to change their decision. So if they're going over the camera, the decision's going to be changed. That's that's the whole idea of it. So once he walks to the camera, I breathed a deep sigh of relief and thought, well, great, no pen. But then the thing that annoyed me after that was on the drop ball, was it Kane or Son who wouldn't back off a sufficient distance? I can't remember now. Yeah, so the ref basically bounced the ball into Fabianski's hands. No, I, but no, I didn't think my initial reaction was no penalty. But as I say, it's a moment in time and you and it happens very quick. Yeah, but it was, it, we did find that extra gear in the second half, didn't we, oh, Steve? Didn't we? Oh, didn't we just? I mean, second half, we were brilliant. Um, <laughs> I, oh, my word. You are right, Danny? <laughs> I like it. It's about uh, right. Yeah, the second half, I mean, I thought we contained them very well in the first half. In the second half, I don't know what Moyes said or did, but I think he put a rocket up certain players' proverbials, and they came out and they were at it. <laughs> and this will make you laugh, Gatesy. Yep. Uh, we pressed and got the second goal, or our mm. goal. And James turned around to me and said, well, that's why Gates is right. We should be pressing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just, there you, you go. You realise it's your 18th birthday soon. You do want gifts and stuff, don't you? But, uh, yeah, second half, brilliant. And I've got a, for me, the best player on that pitch for us last night was Kerr. I thought he was outstanding. But, you know, what a performance in the second half. We were unlucky not to score in the first half as well. Antonio's hit the post. We've had a few good opportunities. And we could have easily won it in the second half. For ch good chance felt for Nails. The trouble is, it was inside the box, so for Nails missed the target. If you notice, for Nails hits the target when he's outside the box. Yeah. yeah. And then we had uh, our new signing, didn't we? And, uh, oh, who's, who's the left back we signed? Brains going. Emerson. Uh, Emerson, yeah. Not to be concerned uh, with their right back. No, we well, see at my age, my brain doesn't wander. It actually goes on holiday for a while, and this is the problem. <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> the ball comes across, and they leave it for each other, and we've all gone no, no. Yeah. But we had every chance to win it, and Boeing right at the end. Yeah. You know, trickles right across. across the front of the goal. Yeah. And I mean, listen. Sorry, go on, Steve. Yeah, actually, Spurs were getting really ratty, weren't they? Yeah. Because they, they also played a game I don't often associate with Spurs. What, the long they balls? Yeah, they targeted Boeing. Did you notice? Every time Boeing got the ball, mm. he got kicked. <laughs> and, Hold up. Uh, Hold up. Did you say a game that we don't normally see from Spurs? I remember the day they capitulated in the title chase and smashed Chelsea around the park. I oh, thought their yes. tactics on Bowen, yeah. I think their Sorry. tactics on Bowen yesterday were absolutely fucking disgusting. They, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't just that they, 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 they were looking to injure him. It wasn't even a case of just um, take him out of the game. The only other time I can remember seeing someone actually what looked to be intent was who was the Everton tosser that took uh, Dimitri out of the game? Oh, oh, at oh, Goodison oh, Park. Oh. Do you remember Kent it? No, Kent will know. Hey, John. Kent will know. Yeah, Everton player that that literally oh. scissored Pyatt from behind. Do you remember? 
and put Pyatt out for X amount of X amount of games, months or whatever. Kent, um, Kent will jump in. And I, he'll know. He'll know. I'm they were doing the gone. same thing. They were doing the same thing with Bowen last night. Um, yes. I have to say, there was an occasion when I screamed at Bowen to get the f- up. Because I felt he'd just decided to dive a little bit. Ah, yes. James McCartney. Um, he kind of dived. What, what I felt was he's dived a little bit. You go back and watch it, and he, he actually stands on the back of his hill. Uh, yeah, 10 for You're me as well. You're going to go 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's been outstanding, yeah. We'll cover that at the end of the video. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I felt they targeted him, like Steve says. But I think it was there was a viciousness in their. Um, yeah, um, I think there was a viciousness in their play with regards to Bowen. Um, but I've got to say, Souffal's awareness and Antonio's just absolute. Shit ass genius, 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 I don't know, geniusness. Very I mean. good. <laughs> yeah, the the pair of them, uh, Sufal's awareness for the throw, um, as, as I discussed earlier, guys, before we came live, I've got a lot of spuds telling me it's a foul throw because you can't bounce the ball into the ground. Um, there's nothing in the in the rules, as far as I could see, that says the ball can't bounce before it reaches his. Um, we're coming to it. Calm down, Sharks. Um, Boys, just give me a sec. I'll be back in a sec. All right, mate. Well, buddy. Um, yeah, there's nothing in the rules that says you can't bounce a ball to its destination. Mm. The ball can't touch the floor. I couldn't see nothing. But so fouls, I, I, I think it was genius from him, was it kind of took the pace off of a quick throw by dashing it in the floor. And then, obviously, Antonio with that control and then kind of like a pitching wedge. Did you see it, Rob? Yeah. Kind of the pitching wedge flick you, off the outside of the boot. It was so deft that I, I honestly, I didn't realise the man had it in him. Didn't realise the man had it in him. And Suchek, again, Rob, I think because we were concerned with the way that Spurs broke in the first half for the goal, yeah. Declan Rice sat a lot more in the second half. Allowed Suchek that Miranda forward. Hence the reason Suchek was where he was when the goal went in, when he, when he received the ball to score the goal. Because we seemed like we were back to the old dynamic. I know I bang on about it quite a lot with regards to the Rice the Rice Suchek experiment. Yep. But I think it proves the point. Declan Rice couldn't go forward because of the Harry Kane debacle. Shout out to you. Yep. Um, which, which meant that Suchek did. And we get a goal from it, Rob. It's, yeah. it's quite simple, isn't it, really? Yeah, not rocket science at the end of the day. I'm back, Were you, were you, were you um, Steve, were you happy once the final whistle went? Were you happy with a point or did you see it as two points dropped given the second half performance? Right, you're giving me one all at the start of the game. We said this on the boats, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, I'd have taken it. I had a sneaky <clears> feeling that we were going to win 2-1. And if we had, I would have gloated uh, quite a lot at the end of the game to you because you said, no, 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 I'll have a draw. But, yeah, one all was fine. I think we saw a West Ham team that were resilient, actually fairly skillful in pl- very skillful in places, uh, up for it together. And if you take aside the result which is quite acceptable, the team performance was also really good. And that gives Mm -hmm. me great encouragement going forward for Chelsea and other games. Because if they play like that, there's going to be a lot of teams who really struggle against us. So, yeah, I was very, very happy with the result and very happy with the performance. Um, The one thing I was really happy about was, (laughs) they said this is a bit uh, mean, I guess, but they were targeting Boeing. So we didn't go into our shell. We gave as good as we got. And after we'd given as good as they, we got, they went into their shell and started whinging. And that was actually very interesting because they didn't like it when they when they got the same sort of yeah hardness back. 
And I think that played a big part in our performance as well in the second half because they were wary. Um, yeah, excellent. Really pleased with it. Duke, same same to you. Point gained or two dropped? Uh, point point gained, as far as I'm concerned. I I, I thought we uh, during our during our preview, I was confident enough to say two one. But it's Spurs. It's Spurs. Okay, let's not fuck around. They're going to be there or thereabouts, top four, top five this season. Um, I, I did use that. You like anyway. him, don't you? Love him. I think he's superb, and I can't. It was only January that he ended up at Juve, so I, I don't, I don't understand. Um, I really don't. Um, awesome player, stunning player. Um, I, I actually used that <laughs> phrase last night during the game. They didn't like no that. Panic. Um, I, I have to say, um, I, I <clears throat> it was a, it's, it's always a point gained when you play the top six. Of the top five, okay. I know people are going to go. Well, we were top six. Listen, money top six, money top six, money yeah. talks, best players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That being said, Rob, we were probably across the across the game three times, probably about an inch away from winning that game. Yeah, you had the Antonio shot in the first half that Karoon back off the post, which I thought was superb. By yeah. the by, yeah. brilliant yeah. play by him. Um, then you have the one that Steve alluded to with the two Brazilians not actually talking to each other. I think was it the two Brazilians? I think it was, it was in yeah. Paqueta yeah. and and Emerson. Um, one of them, I actually think one of them spoke in French. The other one spoke uh, in in Brazil. Even which, though they both come out of French league. Which are we talking about? Because there was two on the pitch our at one point. Our one. Our Italian. Brazilian. Our, our, our Italian Brazilian. Right? Um, and it was just, it was painful. Um, and then obviously the one right at the end where I actually threw myself to my knees on the floor because I couldn't believe that that hadn't gone in. There's your two points drop, Rob. Those, those three one-inch moments. Yeah. That could be your two points dropped. But start the game, picking up a point, I'm happy. I'm happy. I think Moyes is going to be happy. I think um, I, th I think that – no, that's off. I think he's going yeah, Villa. I don't think, I think. I don't think so. Um, we're keeping Dawson. Um, all in all, I'm happy. All in all, I really hope – I was I was watching the um I was watching the boys over on Hammers chat. Um and there was a couple of people that I, I ended up blocking on Facebook or on, on YouTube. Um what? constant Moise out comments, right? Oh for goodness oh. sake. Constant okay. from the same two, then they'd leave and then they'd come back and it was this fucking team, I can't believe he's picking. He hasn't picked some Is this after the final not very whistle well. before the game started? No, no, this was before the game started, mate. And I'm just like, okay. I, I, I was driving through central London. We were coming um, we were coming back from Warwick Castle yesterday and uh, apparently the M25 was bad. So we had to divert through central London. And just listening to the listening to the video, it was just annoying me. Even, even, even Gio made a comment about, stop putting it because it's riling everyone else up in the chat. I mean, I personally think they should have had the mods, time them out, block them, whatever you've got to do, because it was just irritating everyone. It was really leaving a sour taste. Um, I think, do I think if we'd lost that game, the pressure would have been on Moyes going into Saturday's game? Yes. Yes. I really do think it would have been. Um, but that being said, I think... It doesn't matter now. You know, I think we can go to Chelsea and get a result on Saturday. I do. Um, ten years ago, we signed Abdullah Faye, John Crew, Dave Bentley. And now we're signing £52 million players. We've come so far in ten years. He's bang yeah. on. Bang on, Ken. Absolutely spot on. Um, 
I actually have to say, I did like the look of Paqueta when he came on. There were some real good touches in there. Bearing in mind, he hadn't even trained with a team before um, before being put on the bench. You know, um, he probably had a kick about on the warm-up, and that was about it. That's the only time he's seen a ball with his teammates. I think he looked really, really good. Um, but, but here's a question I'm for you, I'm now Luke. excited. Go on, then. Will, 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 will he be able to do it on a cold Tuesday evening in Stoke? Uh, not at least not for a year because they're in the championship. <laughs> All right, well spotted. Unless we, the, unless the we draw them in the FA Cup. Yeah. The one thing I really liked about Paqueta last night, forget all the interplay and stuff. If you noticed, he wanted the ball all the time. Yeah. He kept saying, "Give it to me." You run up the person who <clears throat> was trying to in. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. And he wanted. He kept running up the players in midfield to try and take the ball off them, Steve. Like he'd go within like three yards to receive the pass because he he was eager. Yeah, and I loved it. Um, there were signs. There were signs all across, and 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 I I think you two agree. I'm going to cover um, Sharky's comment earlier. Zuma looked old school. Zuma last night. I don't know what yeah. whether it was the breaks that he's had from. Playing, you know, so many other games. That one there, yeah. He looked a lot more comfortable running. The spring was there. Uh, the passing. I, I actually was very, very impressed with Zuma yesterday. To the point, he was one of my three man of the matches. Three. Yeah. Oh, you can only have one. I tell you, who else had a good game last night and looked back to something like his old self, Suchek. I thought. Yes. He passed the ball pretty well. He challenged. I think he had a good game, and it was really good to see him up for it and going for mm. it. And I thought, yeah, if you yeah, keep that game. up, yeah, you keep that up, we've got a hell of a midfield now. In fact, I'm sure I've got uh, Thomas Suchek's stats here. Yeah, here we go. Um, his Thomas Suchek's game by numbers. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, sh I'll share this. Some of you guys might have already seen this, but just in case you haven't, it's quite interesting. Uh, there it is. Okay, so Thomas Suchek's game by numbers is basically 100% of long balls completed, 100% of tackles won, 90% pass accuracy, which is quite unlike Thomas Suchek, yeah. let's be completely honest. 53 touches, four out of five ground duels won, three interceptions, one shot on target, one goal. That's brilliant. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Mind you, if, I don't know if you've got Dex stats there. Dex were uh, It's interesting well. you say that because, as if by magic, Steve. Well, I always knew you were a mind reader, Gates. So. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. Declan Rice's game by numbers, 100% of aerial duels won. Again, that's more Thomas Socek's forte. 95% yeah. pass accuracy, 76 touches, 64 passes, 22 out of 22 final third passes, 12 ball recoveries, 7 out of 7 long balls completed, one key pass on his 200th West Ham appearance. Yeah. And didn't he say and in his interview, cool. didn't he say in his interview afterwards, you know, he was looking forward to making many more milestones? Um, I haven't you. heard the interview, I would be completely honest. That's what I'd heard he'd said. Okay. So in answer to Sharky's question, the reception when Paqueta stripped off, come on the pitch, it, it was <laughs> it was noise, mate. Pretty yeah. The noise went up and a good couple of notches and it lifted the crowd. I think it lifted the players on the pitch with the exception, obviously, of the player he replaced, which was Mr. Ben Rama. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think that he, he definitely gave us a, a lift at a vital time. And I think he looked very neat and tidy, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. So, There's only right. one, it's only one time I've heard it louder for a player. And that was when Yarmolenko came on shortly after the war had started. Yeah. And when Yarmolenko scored that scored the goal and he mm. was in tears with the response of the crowd. It was that is the only time I've heard it louder there. Yeah. Right. So should we do player ratings, chaps? Oh indeed. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Mm. 
Okay, that is the 11 starters against Tottenham Hotspur yesterday. So, Duke, we'll start with you and then we'll switch over to Steve and we'll go one player at a time. So, talk to me about Lucas Fabianski. Um, he was all right, wasn't he? I mean, he, he did a job. Um, I know we don't do halves, so I'm going to give him a seven. Okay. Yeah. Good save from Emerson, I think it was, mm -hmm. Royale. Um, the ball moved quite a lot, and you, he couldn't work out what he was going to do with it until the very, very last moment. I think he kind of got two fists up, um, and it bashed away over to the... He, he dived one way, and it went back over there. Um, I thought it was, was good. I thought he... Minute, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he commanded his box really well. Again, he was slowing slowing points up, hmm. but I'll take it. So you've given him a seven. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Steve? Um, I would have given him a seven, but his distribution was slow again. I mean, Gonzo said on Hammer's chat, you know, he got it out quickly a couple of times, and I didn't see it. And we had a couple of really good counter-attacks on. And he just held on to it and looked around. So for that, he loses a mark. Rest of the performance was fine. So I'm going to give him a six. Fair enough. Duke, Aaron Cresswell at left back. Seven. Would have been an eight, but he was caught out of possession, uh, caught out of position for the goal. Um, I actually thought he played really well until he, he took a bit of a knock and ended up having to go off, didn't he? Um, yeah. I actually think he played really well. Um, cheers, Kent. Take it easy, my man. Thank you, mate. Um, I actually like think it. he played well other than other than the goal. So, I'm actually going to give him a seven. Um, okay. It would have been higher if he hadn't been in that position to take off. And you, Steve? Uh, gets a six from me. Defensively, very good. Uh, I actually think Chris's legs are starting to go. He's just got no pace at all now mm. when it comes to getting back and covering Decent performance, and six is always a decent score. But, yeah, I'll give him six. It was good, but I think he's starting to get found out now. I think he's, I think age is starting to catch up on him, if I'm honest. Fair. Duke, Luke, um, not Lucas Fabianski, <laughs> Kurt Zuma look, looks exactly like him. How could I get confused between them, Price? Oh. Seven. Yep. High seven. Um, okay. I thought the spring was there defensively. I know Steve mentioned about not showing the player wider and trying mm. to corral him. I actually think he played really well. He, he looked fit again. Um, yeah. He was playing with a smile on his face rather than the grimace that we've seen over the last uh, the last few weeks. Yeah, fair. How about you, Steve? I'm giving him eight actually because okay, it was. Again, as I said, it was a moment in time I saw. I couldn't remember the build-up to the goal particularly well. But I actually mm. thought it was pretty immense. You know, ball comes in the air. Oh, look, there's Uma's head on it. You know, needs to be tackled. He was an absolute rock, so he gets an eight from me. Okay. Uh, Duke, Kilo Kera. I've got two numbers rolling around in my head. Oh. Go on. I'm Are you go marking him down the OG? No, I'm giving him, I'm going with my initial, uh, my initial uh, number, which is the agreement with Neil from Down Under. You're giving him my a nine. My man of the match and a nine. Okay. You've given him, a, so he's, he's your hero then? No. Wow. So he's not your man of the match. No, he is. He's my man of the match, but he's not my hero. Okay. Okay. Mm. Talk to me about his performance then. Why Why have you given him that? I just, uh, mate, he was immense. Yeah. For someone, like, let's be honest, today was his first, yesterday was his first real Premier League test. Mm. Okay. Um, he wasn't there for the City game, was he? He uh, came in just before the Vibor no, game, if I remember uh, yeah. rightly. Yeah. 
That's so right. today was his first real test of what I'd consider to be uh, a top Premiership international striker. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I personally think he handled Mr. Kane very, very well yesterday to the point I don't think I saw Kane do a hell of a lot. Um, I thought Karen was immense, absolutely immense. Um, and I think you said he's six foot, Robin. He? Six foot one. Six foot one. The, when the guy jumps, mate, Christ almighty, he's like he's eight and a half foot tall. Like he has got an absolute Bring on him. And I'm telling you now, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if he keeps his place in the team when Agard is back. I think yeah. him and Agard may be pushing Zuma out of the starting eleven. Yeah, no, I, I personally think it's Zuma that might be in <laughs> on the bench, but we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Steve? Uh, nine. Oh, if it wasn't for the own goal, he'd have got 10. And, but you got, I, I find it really harsh to say that. I think not only was his defending brilliant, he is so comfortable on the ball. When Antonio hit the post, it was his ball out, excellent mm. pass that was played on. Just an all round fantastic performance. And I tell you what, if he carries on like that now, if a Gerb was our first choice and this guy was our second choice and we got him in, how flaming good is a Gerd? You know? He, yes. I I watched him last night and I thought, blimey, we've got a player on our hands there. And for that price as well in today's market. <laughs> well, it's, God, it's like my brother's just it. said. Go on, Sorry, yeah. Go on. No, I was just yeah. saying, it's like my brother's just said there. He's, he's had two games where he's given away a penalty against Brighton. He scored no G today. If you're not a West Ham fan or you're not watching the West Ham games and you just see those two things on a, on a bit of paper or, you know, on a on a website, then, yeah, you know, people are going to be looking at, and go, looking on, looking at it and going, well, he's a bit shit, isn't he? So you get for 10 million quid. Yet, as he says, he's been superb. And, it, from, and and as you just said there, mate, an absolute steal at 10 million quid. Yeah. Five Craig I, Dawson's. Uh, yeah, well, I tell you what, though, the other thing Played is... Played like five Craig Dawson's as well yesterday. Yeah. On the ball. And the only word I can... The only word I can do is elegant. Oh, someone sounds like this, honey. I'm not getting anything. It's probably me then. Let me piss off and come back. Yeah. On the ball, he looks elegant. That's the only way to describe it. The ball's at his feet. He's comfortable. He's looking for the forward pass. What a player. I I, I know he he was signed because a girl got injured, but goodness me, he was superb. I... I'd pay money just to go and watch him play on last night's performance. It mm. was, a, it was, yeah, he was worth the ticket almost all on his own last night. So, yeah, nine yeah. all day long. So, we'll now turn our attention. Duke, we'll go to Vladimir Kufal. Um, I'm going to give him a seven, Rob. I, I think he okay. played really well last night. I think, again, he's, he's switched on. His attention to, to that quick throw, rightly or wrongly, or however you want to call it, foul throw or not, I don't care. We've gone from it, piss off. Um, but he's his awareness of that. Um, and I actually think, he'd, again, other than being caught out of place because he could have done a could have done a very uh, could have been the one to come back and mark uh, Son for the obviously the own goal that Kara got. But no, I'll, I'll give him a seven. Please with his performance. Fair mm. enough. We'll go to the captain, Declan Rice. Uh, can I did do Steve, so? I was just saying, did Steve do Sufal? Oh, sorry. I've no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, My uh, apologies. Normally, it'd be a seven, but I'm going to give him an eight. And I'm going to give him an eight for one. I'm giving you that extra mark for one thing. 
he went over and thanked the ball boy for giving him the ball quickly for the throw. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> and I thought that was real, real class, actually. You know, no, you, he's basically said to uh, a ball boy who sat there, no, you were really important in that. And I bet that kid felt a million dollars or whatever the ball boy was. So he gets yeah. an extra mark for me from that, just for the pure class of the act. Just on that, do you know what's just popped into my head? As you were saying about Ball Boy and all the rest of it and feeling a million dollars, do you remember about 10 years ago? I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going. The guy, do you remember, um, Steve, because I, th I think I told Duke this. So he knows. Where no, I'm I going. read this. I know, I know exactly what you're you. on about, though. Yeah, I read okay. it. Yeah. There was the ball boy that got kicked by Eden Hazard when remember it, yeah. them. Do you know that ball boy is now worth 60 million quid? Really? He got into some yeah. vodka. AU vodka. AU yeah. vodka. Sells, sells, sells 30 quid a bottle. Good for 30 quid a bowl. And he's, he's oh. as a result, he's now worth 60 million quid. There you oh. go. Once upon a time, he was getting shooed by Eden Hazard. Now, well, in fairness, he's probably worth allegedly. Hazard. Allegedly, it was started with Daddy's money, though, because Daddy's money is actually the uh, the chairman of Swansea, if my memory serves me correctly. Oh, is that Hugh Williams? Yeah. Oh, I didn't oh, know it was his money. son. Oh, hang yeah. on, hang on, hang on a minute, hang on. 319 in my pub. Yeah, she works in a weather sponge. Oh. Ah. Oh. I was going to say, which pub's that? Yeah, we'll have to come and visit. Is that the one? Oh, is that the one in, one in Lewisham, is it? No, she's uh, just the one in Deptford, Catford, Deptford, Catford, Deptford, Catford, Deptford, Catford. That's where we are. Yep, Deptford, Catford, Deptford. Let us, let us know, Rebecca. I'll have to pop in. Probably, probably neither of those, to be fair. Uh, hang on, hang on. Catford, there, I was right. What's, uh, it, what's it called? Shitholes is us. It's all, it's like all the other friendly. fucking weather spoons are. Like all the weather spoons are, Rob. God's waiting room. You can, it's not <laughs> quite the end of the world, but you can see it from there. That's not very nice. I mean, it might be true, but it's not very nice. Right. After what the gates you said about my age, I know where I should be drinking then. Oh, the London and Rye. You're on the A, um, A21. Yeah, I know it. Okay. I know it. No, I, I drive that. Too, but... I drive past that quite regularly, actually. So, yeah, I know exactly where you are. Oh, I might, I might pop in one day. I might surprise you, Rebecca. Right, back in, back on script, ladies and gentlemen. Declan Rice, Duke. Hey, hey. Go on. Average mark for Deck, but based off the back of his last. Three performances. This one was special. Yep. This one was special. There was a drive. There was a grit. There was a determination. Uh, you know, um, I think Tony's Tony seen a comment, a couple of comments of mine after his interview with you on uh, mm -hmm. on Tuesday when Happy asked the question about should he be more commanding as a as a captain, and I've said I want to see him. You know, remonstrating more. I want to see him firing up the team more. Well, I saw that last night, Rob. Not so much the remonstrating, but the firing of the team, the, the G-ing up. The, and again, just take a look at his stats. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Steve? Nine. I mean, no stats Ooh. speak for themselves, don't they? And also, he came, as a, he came of age as a captain last night. You know, Spurs were kicking our players around. Deck wouldn't have any of it. Actually, you know, he put in a couple of how can I say robust challenges to put certain Spurs a little bit meaty, in their yeah, yeah, uh, enthusiastic. So, yes, yeah, he actually led the team and he also protected the team and he played a brilliant game. Got he set the tone, didn't he? Yeah, he, he was terrific. I thought, okay, so Duke. If I if I may pass the the sirens of the London Constabulary in Lewisham, um, yeah, get your man. thoughts on Thomas Socek's performance. Um, he she's a top, uh, she's a Charlton fan, Audi. It's all right. 
and she did. She was standing next to me watching it. Um, Thomas Suchek gets a nine, misses out on the man of the match by a nun's chuff, and actually gets my hero, to be honest with you. I thought that was the Thomas Suchek of old last night, Rob. I was really, really impressed with him. Um, you know, Steve mentioned there about Deck throwing around some challenges. He weren't pissing around either with a few. Nice. He he left a couple of people laying on the floor. Um, fair challenges, just old school challenges, Rob. He was going in and he was going in hard. Um, and I, I was really, really impressed with him. Um, again, we go back to what I was saying earlier and people that have seen the channel before will know my banging on about the, the Declan Rice experiment. Well, Declan Rice stayed a bit deeper yesterday due to the threat of Son and Kane. Con and Sane? <laughs> Son and Kane plus Kulisevsky. So, Imagine saying that after a couple of sherbets inside you. Mate, I haven't even had a drink yet. Um, the fact that Rice had to stay back, we saw what Suchek was capable of. We saw mm. what Suchek was doing in his first season at the club and we kind of saw an end for a game at least of the of the Declan Rice experiment and it allowed Suchek to do his natural game and be his natural self. You saw that. He got the equaliser. Um, nine, he just misses out, like I say, by Nun's chuff of man of the match. Nun's chuff. Steve? Uh, nine for me as well. I thought him and Rice were brilliant last night. And it was so good to see him smiling, head up, passing the ball, getting yeah. in. It, I don't know where he's been for the last eight, nine months, but last night he was great. And actually, the way he took the goal, OK, brilliant flip from Antonio, but his first touch was immaculate. Yeah, it's time to run right. beautifully as well, I thought. Oh, I mean, that was not an easy skill, and he did that very, very well. Hmm. So he's got to be annoyed. Fair. Should... Would he have been the recipient of your hero award? Uh, no, that's Kara. Oh, that you'd gone Kara. That's his third game, and he was immense. Fair. Okay, Duke, back to you. We'll go with Pablo Four Nows next. I, I, I thought he was pressing. I mean, yeah, I mean, should do better with a shot. Hmm. Um, but he's got a little bit in the bank for the deflected goal against Villa. So <laughs> I'm going to let him off with that one. Um, he was, again, full of running, Rob, drive, desire, passion. He was he was up in their faces. He was um, he was challenging like I want to see a, a challenge going. Basically, he wore the shirt with pride last night, and it was mm. really good to see. Like he, he he covered a hell of a lot of ground. I'd like to actually see his mileage um, for the game. Um, but yeah, I'll give him an eight. Steve, uh, I give him a seven which is a very, very good mark. It was between seven and eight. But there are a lot of high marks out there that I've given for really outstanding performances. Mm. And he was very, very good. But he wasn't an eight or a nine, if you see what I mean in the context yeah. of the game. Yeah, but fair yeah, enough. But yeah, performance. Duke, Mr. Ben Rama, your favourite? Stop it. <laughs> uh, I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna go an eight again. No he eight played here. with a bit. Of, no, it's an eight. Um, he played with freedom. He played with freedom yesterday. Yep. He, he, played, yep. he played with a little bit of shackles off. Did it kind of cost us with a goal because the, you know he, he was playing very free and very you know just go do um, yeah possibly but wow he, again it was good to see again. He was also part of the press that really caught Tottenham off guard at times. You know, the whole Sanchez. Um, it was it was good to see. I'll give him an eight. And I just hope long may this continue with him. How about um, you, Steve? Well, slightly quieter than the last two games, but his pressing was excellent. He, he played well, so I'm going to give him a seven. I thought it was about the same level as Pablo, to be fair. 
And I thought it was a very good, very competent game. Fair enough. Uh, Duke, is um, Bowen getting back to being on fire for you? Uh, oh, I thought we saw glimpses of it yesterday, Rob. I, I really do. Um, I I thought that... Take care, Beck. The, yeah, cheers, Beck. Um, the, the opening of the, you know, the opening exchange is getting the ball to him and seeing him running, seeing him do stuff, seeing him, you know, go for it, mm. which then led to him getting the shit kicked out of him. Um, you can see that there was a drive and a determination, a passion back, um, which is good to see. But we'll see against Chelsea on Saturday just how far he's come from, from the previous three games of the season. How about yourself, Steve? Uh, I'll give him a seven. I thought, was, I thought he was good. What I was most impressed about was they just clattered him again and again and again. And he got up and he didn't stop trying. And that showed real yeah. character. Because it would have been very easy to get peed off and think, I don't want to be kicked around all night. But he just kept at it. And, yeah, that took guts last night because they were targeting him. And they were, yeah, I, I was actually getting really wound up by it by the end of the game, because as soon as he got the ball, bang, bone was over. And you think, Ugh. So, yeah, seven. And my, a great deal of respect for his attitude of just keeping going and carrying on. Fair. And the last one of the starting 11, Duke, Mr Antonio, got the assist. I didn't give him a nine, Rob. Ooh. This is what I mean about I had three players on, on that number. Yeah. Three man of the match performances, but obviously could only give it to one. I thought he was brilliant. The, the attitude that he showed, but again, this I think this comes, and I said it last night. I actually watched the game with Paul Stewart last night. Not the Not Paul Stewart, our Paul Stewart. <laughs> no. And I turned around and said, Rob, the reason we saw the Antonio we saw last night is because he's now got competition and he was dropped. And he's got to work hard now to get, get back in the team, stay in the team, retain his place, you know, in, in certain games. Because Skamaka is going to be breathing down his neck every step of the way. But he was up for it last night, you know, from from the one that hit the post. That was like a mm. screamer. That was brilliant. That was old school Antonio. The yep. assist, as, as uh, Nils just said there, absolutely sublime. Brilliant. Fantastic pass. Um, I was really, yeah. really impressed. Um, and, and his overall pressing and, um, you know, overall display that he was doing for the West Ham shirt. He, he was putting it in for the club. Steve, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to give him a nine as well. Uh, I think he was superb last night. But I think it's more than he's just got competition from Skamaka, mm. I think it's he's not damn well playing every single game, so he's not completely dead in his feet. Yeah. End of last yeah. season, he was knackered. And, you know, his performances went off. Okay, fair enough. It happens. But, yeah, nine. I thought he was, ter I thought he was terrific. And the thing with Antonio is, that I love, you know, he's, that flick he did, beautiful. Another day he does it and he completely misses the ball. And he's so difficult to play against because you never know what's going to happen next. Mm. It can either be brilliant or it can be absolutely awful. It must be a nightmare for defenders, but no, nine for me. Yeah. Uh, there's the substitutes and the manager. I don't think it's fair to mark the substitutes because they weren't really in for any significant amount of time, but... Just, just for my money, I, as I say, I thought that the introduction of Paqueta gave the crowd a little bit of extra sort of impetus to get behind the team, which then raised the team, their sort of levels and all the rest of it. Just that substitution alone was was very influential in the game. All right, it, it wasn't influential in terms of getting a goal and getting all three points, but I do think that it helped to give us just a little bit of a of a extra bit of push. Is that fair to say, boys? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, the crowd went wild when he came. Well, as soon as he took his training bib off and he was going to come on, everybody saw it and went crazy then, didn't they? Mm. And from that moment on, yeah, it was, yeah, it made a big difference. Were you impressed, Duke, with what you saw on the pitch from the new boy? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely. The, um, uh, the movement, as, as Steve alluded to earlier, the wanting the ball, um, as I said, you know, going... Going within two yards. Give me the fucking ball. I want to do something. Let's go. Let's do this. Um, he looks like he's going to be a special, special player. Really okay. looking forward to seeing more of him. Yes, so Duke, I can't wait. So, Duke, what are you going to mark um, the manager? I was going to give him a nine, Rob. Okay. Got it right last night. We were very, very close to three points. Very. Uh, <laughs> three times one inch. Close to, to picking up three points. I, I thought he he got it right last night. I know everyone moans about the side. I I was pissed off when I first saw the lineup until I knew that Skamaka was um, was ill. Um, yeah. Do I think Cornet would have made any difference over Ben Rama? Probably not. Lanzini hasn't been great this season, so him instead of Fornell was no. Would Emerson have been able to prevent the goal? Possibly. But when he, he got it right, you know, for all, for all our second guessing, he got it right. And, and we were, like I say, three, three, three times one inches away from picking up three points. Your thoughts, Steve, on the manager? Well, he didn't get anything wrong, did he? I mean, let's be fair, everything worked. So you got to give him a 10 because it was flawless. Uh, yeah, I can't actually find anything to criticise last night. We played well. And to take it from where we performed against Brighton, where I had it in my top three worst ever performances, to last night in the space of two games is immense. So yeah, it gets 10 from me. Fair enough. Did either of you two chaps see the post-match comments from Mr Conte? Oh, about the penalty, the throwing. Just generally moaning. Oh, but but Spurs fans have been moaning all day. You know, it's, uh, oh, it wasn't foul throwing. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. Okay, forget the throwing. You should have defended better if you didn't want to concede a goal. Mm. Um, it really is clutching at straws and sour grapes. And they hate giving us any credit at all. But I like Moyes. Uh, uh, a reporter said to him, you know, how does it feel to get a point off a bigger club? And he turned around and said, well, I debate you that Spurs are a bigger club than us. And I think on last night's performance, I think he's got a point. A lot of time for that. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> we were we were better than Spurs last night. And actually, we're growing and going in the right direction. Conchie's got them playing an Italian style of attritional football. OK, carry on. But when it doesn't go his way, he has a strop. Well, OK, again, that's his prerogative to see it whichever way he wants to. But he was wrong. It wasn't a penalty. And actually, don't whinge about the foul throw. Whinge about your defenders mm. that were beaten with two great bits of skill. Because I tell you what, if it had gone the other way, he wouldn't be screaming it was a foul throw. No. No. Do you find it quite patronising, Duke, that we always seem to get the sort of shitty comments from the opposition manager after we've taken a point or all three off of them? And you find that they're, they're not so scathing in their criticism when they've taken all three. When they've taken all three, they're a little bit more complimentary. And all, or is it just me? Am I just imagining that? I don't think... No, you're I on am. the money. Yeah. You're on the money, listen... Listen, we're West Ham. We're a, we're an unattractive club to most. Um, you know they, they <laughs> we're not considered we're not considered top six in their opinion. No. They don't like us. Um, they don't like the fact that we're trying to gate crash that party for the last couple of seasons. They don't like it. Um, and if they can be derogatory about us, if they can. Uh, if they can make them comments and try and belittle us in front of others, then that's what they do. 
the, the big six that always like it, Rob. Arsenal, Spurs, Liverpool, mm. Chelsea, Tottenham, uh, City, United. I, I think the, mod, the modern sort of like phraseology of it is they're, they're a bit salty. Yeah. I tell yeah. you what, I always remember Mourinho's comments when we played Man U and we beat them 3-1. That was the game he called Diop uh, immense, you know, a beast. But yep. he said afterwards, how do you feel about losing 3-1? And he said, well, two of their goals shouldn't have counted. And that was mm. Mourinho's response. Now, I like Mourinho, but come on. You know, and Conte last night, actually, if anybody should be pleased to come out with a point from that game, it should be you. Because you were hanging Agreed. on. And Agreed. I, yeah, look at it. Look at it as it really is. You might not like us. Frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I don't like, you know, I don't, yeah. don't like Spurs very much. But, you know, credit where credit's due. You've got to give them, if they play well, fine. I'll give it to them. But, no, it's just... He's just sour grapes, isn't it? And you just let him get on with it because he's, you know, if he wants to have a tantrum, let him have a tantrum. So it's not going to affect that, me. That's or brilliant. All my enjoyment of the game. Yeah. Well, I believe that on Saturday, possibly all police leave has been cancelled. Have you seen the fixtures in London at 3 p.m. on a Saturday? Oh, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking awful, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm locking the doors. I ain't opening. I haven't seen them. What are they? Okay, let me just bear with me. Um, because I only found out about this yesterday. I was like, really? Um, right, so in the Premier League on Saturday, 3 p.m., you've got Tottenham against Fulham. Right. This is all in London, right? Yeah. Chelsea against West Ham. Yeah. Um, you've also got in the hang on, where is it? In the championship, you've got Millwall v Cardiff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's three matches in London that take place on Saturday. Three o'clock kickoffs with... Brentford, like, Brentford have got Leeds, haven't they? Uh, have they? Someone's oh, yeah. got Leeds. Leeds, yes, I missed that one. And so we know what they're like with Cardiff yeah, and Millwall. Yeah. It's... Uh, I think all police leave has been cancelled. Yeah, uh, I think you might be right. Tell you what, you haven't got any nuclear bunkers close by which you could run to for <laughs> but there's, in case of emergency. There's that secret nuclear bunker, isn't there, that no one knows about in Brentwood? Is it oh, yeah, Brentwood? Just down the road from me. Yeah, I know yeah. exactly where it is. Yeah. Yeah, the secret yeah, nuclear bunker where there's signposts going to it. <laughs> That's hilarious, isn't it? Crazy. Crazy. Um, Steve, any th final thoughts before we wrap it up on the game yesterday? Oh, I thought it was terrific. Loved it. Come so far since that Brighton performance. Team looked together. Uh, we've shown great intent in the transfer window. I've got no complaints, which for a West Ham fan is a very unusual state of affairs. And I think I'll uh, now go and sit down and slap myself a bit. So, you know, it's everything's good um, no I loved it I thought it was great atmosphere great guy good yourself Duke I think that could be the the, the game that kick starts and get we gain momentum from Rob I, mm. I thought they played some really good football out there last night they were together to a man for that game it was it was really good to see really good to watch really pleased with the performances um Individually and as a team effort. Um, long may they continue. Tell Chelsea won't want to play us on Saturday. No. Nope. They won't be relishing it, that's for sure. Mm. Right. OK, well, that was the match review of the game that took place yesterday at London Stadium. West Ham won, Tottenham won. Um, Duke, I believe we're going to be reconvening tomorrow, are we not? We are, at the same time. Or half six, actually, because I've got... DJ. Okay, fair enough. Right, before you guys disappear, I do you know what I've done it again, haven't I? Right, okay, bear with. I I get so engrossed. It's it's one of those. Right, okay. Let me just put this in the live chat, and there we go. Right, so. Uh, not yet, Duke, because it hasn't been confirmed. Confirmed, if you know what I mean. 
Like, no, so I'm still I'm still waiting for a comeback. So anyway, secret squirrel, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Please donate to the Iron Supporting Food Bank charity. I've just put the link in the chat. This is a charity that does an awful lot of good work in the Newham Borough area, trying to put food on the plates of some families that have fallen on stony ground. If you guys have got a couple of coppers in your pocket, there is the Just Giving link on that banner. I have just put it in the live chat. No donation is too small. Please give generously and you'll be doing a great service to people that are in the locality of West Ham United, our great football club. We thank you very much indeed for your consideration in this matter. Please don't also forget to like, comment on and share the stream to your social media platform. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell icon. You'll be given alerts on new content as and when it's uploaded to the channel. As always, we thank you very much indeed for your support. Gentlemen, what are we? We're massive. Massive, That's Robert. Good. We're on the way there again. And I'm now going to hit the outro credits and not the intro, dude. Make sure it's the right one. Oh. Yes, please. That'd be great. There you go. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons.